Hello, and welcome to From Idea to Implementation, Bibframe Becomes a Reality. My name is Beth Picknally Camden, and I'm here today to introduce you to our panel. The implementation of Bibframe in active cataloging workflows and linked data exchange environments is live, and it's evolving across several paths that are often intertwined. In this complex bibliographic ecosystem, a number of projects are underway, and the panelists today will highlight their experiences on their individual projects, as well as from the perspective of interaction and integration. We have an international panel today um, with a number of experts working in Bibframe projects. Sally McCallum from the Library of Congress. Ian Bigelow from the University of Alberta Library is substituting for Nancy Lorimer. Simeon Warner from Cornell University Library. Beth Pignali Camden, that's me, from the University of Pennsylvania Libraries. And Tiziana Passamento from Casalini Libri and at Cult. Our panelists today will cover a number of initiatives and tools working in the Bibframe environment. Some of the topics covered today are the MARVA editor at the Library of Congress, original and copy cataloging in Bibframe, the Synopia linked data editor, the questioning authority tool for linked data enrichment, user experience testing of Bibframe in the Share VDE discovery environment, and the Share VDE initiative and tools. We hope you enjoy today's presentations, and we welcome questions at the end of the panel presentations. Good day, everyone. The focus of this uh, BibFrame panel is from idea to implementation. So I want to sketch what I call practice to production at the Library of Congress. I am Sally McCallum from the Library of Congress in Washington, DC, and I've been active with BibFrame from its beginning. Let's start with a few fundamentals. BibFrame is an RDF ontology or vocabulary for describing bibliographic resources like the fields of MARC. But BibFrame follows the RDF standards, so it uses cl classes and properties rather than tags and subfields to identify data. It was developed with the new RDA cataloging rules as a guide. Now, why are we using RDF rather than the format structure of MARC? Because RDF is a widely adopted web standard that is highly tuned to linked data. Moving to the RDF structure for our data is important to en enable libraries to move forward. The Library of Congress started what I call practicing with the use of BibFrame in 2015 with its first pilot. Implementing a pilot was not easy because of our size. We have over 300 uh, catalogers, and while they are situated mostly around Washington, D.C., there are significant groups in New Delhi, Cairo, Rio, and other foreign offices. We also have lots of variety in the resources we collect, many languages, many scripts, and many media. Fortunately, our director of cataloging, Beecher Wiggins, was interested in testing BibFrame and willing to commit resources. So we set up the first pilot using the BibFrame 1.0 ontology, a simple editor, a basic data store and triple store, and rudimentary documentation, and 40 skilled Library of Congress catalogers who were eager to, partic eager to participate and try something different. After a couple of years, we ended the first pilot. We took stock and then began an enhanced pilot incorporating what we had learned from catalogers, from programmers, and about the new technology. Pilot 2 uses the BookFrame 2.0 ontology, a revision of 1.0 to make it a, a bit closer uh, in relationship to RDA. In order to be able to include all the diversity of resources, the number of pilot participants was increased to 100. The entire Library of Congress catalog was converted to BibFrame and made available to catalogers so they could truly complete their bibliographic descriptions inside the BibFrame system. Obviously, the Mark to BibFrame converter was a major key for this pilot, and it has been continually refined to deal with the duplication in MARC and the abundance of special punctuation that is left that we had inherited from the ISVD era. 
there are two essential subsystems of the BibFrame system that interact with the BibFrame database. Marva is the BibFrame edit editor that the catalogers use to create BibFrame descriptions. And Marva is supported by our link data service that we call ID. ID is an RDF application that contains many term lists, including even the NACO name authority file. We first made it available inside and outside of the library in 2010. Today, it is widely accessed with around seven to eight million requests each month. But the point is that it is important to the BibFrame editor, Marva. ID provides efficiency for catalogers by supplying type of heads and lookups, and it also provides consistency in the descriptive data, which ultimately improves retrieval. It is surprising the number of, way, of ways the term author can be spelled when it is typed as a string. But the, uh, the pilots have required double keying of descriptions, and as bib frame descriptions in the mark as bib frame descriptions in the bib frame system and as mark descriptions in the Voyager system. And that's not viable for long. So now let's talk about the other parts of my na name for the presentation, production. We have two initiatives to move forward with bib, bib frame. The first is more short term. It is to use the bib frame system with the Voyager ILS. The idea is to use the Marva editor to create the full records in bib frame and feed them to Voyager rather than keying again. The library's end users would still use the Voyager OPAC. This requires a bib frame to mark conversion that is standard and follows the mark preferences of the Voyager ILS. And this has been a challenge to achieve because of the age and diversity of the library's mark records. However, it would enable us to stop double keying of descriptions it would enable us to continue BibFrame explorations in a linked data environment without harming or disrupting the library's end user environment. And it would teach us more about the ins and outs of implementing BibFrames. The other initiative is more complete and long-term. Last month, it was announced that Folio had been selected to replace the Voyager ILS, and it will use BibFrame. We are just starting on our adaptation of Folio and it will take many months of, frankly, exciting development. Thank you. Hello everyone, and thank you for having me here today for the Charleston Conference. I'm acting as a substitute for Nancy Lorimer in this presentation, big shoes to fill. Um, but also think it's telling that I can dive in with this and give a very similar talk. Um, I think really patterns are definitely emerging. Um, how some of these things are being done. So for this session, I'm going to talk about BibFrame cataloging with Synopia as an important component of moving from idea to implementation. So first, why is this important to us at the University of Alberta Library? Well, UAL recently announced the launch of our linked implementation plan. So along with others here today, we're working on a number of the key components to make BibFrame a reality. One of these uh, key requirements for that, of course, is having a, a catalog cataloging editor for linked data. For those working on implementation, as I need to move beyond converting data and start uh, describing resources and maintaining it in our uh, uh, bib frame, more specifically in this case. Simple enough, right? Except we're talking about utilizing new technologies, uh, new data. And of course, it's a complex transitional environment with the need to support both new and legacy systems and how they connect with each other. Um, this example is, illustrates that point. A uh, diagram attempts to capture key connectors for data going to new and current systems. So here we have a bib frame based cataloging editor with Synopia, an entity management tool with jQuery, um, data source and discovery tool with Sherva.de and the Sapiency knowledge base, and ways to connect to our mark based systems. But while getting these things uh, put together, I think would be a ma major achievement. I wouldn't call it simple. So enter Synopia. Uh, Synopia is a linked data creation environment developed and built as part of LD4P, linked data for production, which was funded by the Mellon Foundation. It's made up of a linked data template maker and editor, includes lookups to include vocabularies by a questioning authority, uh, more on that uh, shortly, and um, a database of templates and descriptions created by members. 
Synopia is web-based, open source, anyone can use it. Uh, metadata entry in Synopia is based on templates created by users or user communities. Uh, templates provide the RDF for properties and classes desired by the user uh, in cataloging. Templates may use any RDF-based ontology. Of course, the focus of today's talk is for the frame. And templates also act as metadata application profiles for, for users and user communities. So we have new data. Here's an example of BibFrame RDF in Synopia uh, for an instance. Uh, so filling the primary need to have a native RDF editor. But also, as already noted, one of the complexities for moving towards implementation is conducting new and other existing systems uh, while Mark is still in play. Here we have a high level overview of the Snopia middleware for Azure C Symphony, our current ILS. Um, this was developed through LD for P3 and UAL is now working on setting this up for our own use. As you can see, this will allow us to describe in BibFrame, but then output Mark for our ILS to support other, other things. So the circ or reserves or any, anything you name it. So here's an example of Synopia Mark output from the Synopia editor. And then here we have a sample, uh, the same output once it reaches the Symphony ILS. It's also worth noting that the Synopia middleware is also being worked on for Folio, uh, Annex Libris, idea to extend to, to different uh, ILS, LSB systems. This is an example of Synopia data converted to the Folio inventory for, for Stanford. So all in all, um, what is Snopia and what does it mean for us? Uh, well, it gives us original copy cataloging uh, tool for, for BibFrame. It has these connections to other parts of our ecosystem. And this means that we can look forward to changing to BibFrame cataloging workflows while still populating our Cersei Mark data set as needed through the transition. This also presents many new opportunities. As catalogers start to work on data in BibFrame, it becomes a live catalog and collection but also being able to leverage said data for multiple new use cases. Discovery, of course, is a, a key use case for our users, but we can also turn our attention to leveraging our collection data in its new form for other things, new ways to approach collection development, um, shared print analysis, resource sharing, and so on. This is probably a shift of, of equivalent significance as when libraries moved from cards to online catalogs. There's plenty of work to be done, but there's also lots to look forward to. Thank you very much. Hello, I'd like to talk about the questioning on authority lookup service and linking the data. First, let me introduce the team. At Cornell, the three people most involved with this work are Lynette Rail, Stephen Folsom, and Greg Delisle. Huda Khan and Jason Kovari are involved with many other aspects of the linked data for production work. And I am Simeon Warner. When not a disembodied voice, I look something like the picture on the right. Dave Eichmann at Iowa is a critical partner in this work. He focuses on caching and indexing support to support lookups. Linked data is pretty cool, and there are lots of good reasons that it should be the basis for library cataloging. However, it is not magic. Cataloging in BibFrame, the way we cataloging mark, or simply migrating records to the new format, doesn't gain very much on its own. It separates work and instance properties in a logical way that mark fails to do, but not much more. To realize the goals of improved discovery and metadata maintainability, one needs to replace strings with things. By this, I mean moving away from controlled vocabulary terms, thesaurus terms, or authority strings to instead link to other linked data entities using URIs. Strings are still needed for user interfaces, but the URI of the entity is the primary data, and the strings are labels taken from the linked entity's description. Which entities do we need to be able to link to and how do we do it? We have had great community interest and lots and lots of authority and entity sources. The picture on the right shows the set of authority sources that are currently available through the questioning authority lookup service. There are two ways in which the lookup service works. The first applies when an entity source provides a good query API of its own. Pioneering services such as Agrivoc and Wikidata provide such APIs. However, there's no standardization, so the lookup service translates queries and data into a common form. 
The second situation applies when an entity source either doesn't have a query API or it doesn't meet cataloging needs. In this case, we take a dump of the entire data set, load it into a local cache, and then index it to support queries. This can be quite an undertaking for large sources, and one also has to manage updates. The end result, however, is that the Questioning Authority Lookup Service provides a standard API with standard data format over all the entity sources it supports. This simplifies the work of building an editor using them enormously. The screenshot on the left shows the Questioning Authority Lookup Service being used within the Sinopia Link Data Editor to do a genre form lookup. Multiple sources are searched here, LCGFT, Mesh, and Getty AAT. And there are results from GFT and AAT shown along with contextual information. For simple vocabulary lookups, there's also a type ahead style of interaction. In the Linked Data for Production projects, we have worked in the context of the Sinopia editor developed by the Stanford team. The Questioning Authority APIs are designed to allow other integrations as well, though. I've described what we've achieved in this area so far as part of the Linked Data for Production projects funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. The LD for P3 grant is ongoing, and we are now focusing on improving the deployment and operations infrastructure using container technologies suited to cloud deployment. Our goal is to make operation and maintenance easier. We are also still doing some authority additions, though our capacity is limited. A related effort I'd like to mention is the develop of, development of a synchronization and update approach for entity metadata, a working group involving participants from several institutions, including the Library of Congress, is working on a specification using the W3C activity streams as a basis. Also, the software developed in this work is openly available for reuse, and we have our running instance of the Questioning Authority Lookup Service being used within the Sinopia community. I feel like that services like this will be essential to the evolving BibFrame cataloging ecosystem. However, they do take money and effort to maintain, so we're looking at sustainability models beyond the current grant funding. Thank you for listening. I won't read them out, but I provide a number of useful links on this slide. Hi. I'm Beth Picknelly Camden from the University of Pennsylvania Libraries, and I'd like to talk to you today about our project to do user experience testing in the Share VDE discovery environment. I'd like to acknowledge Jim Hahn, Head of Metadata Research, and Kate Omberg, User Experience Researcher and Designer, who led this project and contributed to these slides. Penn's work in BibFrame is rooted in our linked data vision. In particular, our primary goal is user focus, wanting to make resources easier for our users to find and obtain. So we have been involved in multiple bib frame projects, including Synopia, which an earlier panelist spoke of, and Share VDE, which you'll hear more about later in the panel. Today, I'm going to focus on the Share VDE discovery environment and Penn's approach to user testing of this new uh, beta environment. Our user experience testing used a virtual test environment. Uh, we used Zoom that allowed us to record the user screen as well as their commentary while they were searching. We uh, recorded these uh, tests and then following a standardized script, and then later we would listen to the recordings and analyze them in a shared table that the work team uh, shared and um, recorded the data in from these different recordings. The recordings were done in May and June of this year with five users, including faculty, graduate students, and undergraduates. Um, we evaluated six tasks and 35 questions, including their perceptions. So what are some of the trends that we uh, found? First of all, um, as not surprising, most of the users began their searching experience in Google. Um, they are highly familiar with library search environments and used sophisticated search techniques such as Boolean operators or using quotes to indicate phrase searching. The other trend was that none of them were able to define the terminology that um, we were testing on. Some of the opportunities that we identified during this testing is the need for more indicators to help users feel confident that their search results returned their, what they expected. 
they were also um, unclear about this order of the search results. So maybe there's a need to look more at the relevancy ranking in Share VDE. And there's also a need to look more at some of the terminology that is used in the interface and improving that and doing additional testing. One example of this was the term related agents, which uh, we found that users were did not well understand as um, being a general term that comprised authors, editors, collaborators, illustrators, etc. Another example of a terminology problem was the difference between works and publications. Um, the Share VDE uses publications rather than the bib frame term instance. Um, and um, I feel like the uh, test examples that we had them search did not highlight uh, the special reasons that um, would make the distinction between works and publications useful to the users. For example, prolific authors with multiple edition of the same work. Um, we also tested their reactions to the data that the interface uses that's pulled in from Wikidata and Wikipedia. Um, for example, um, the um, images that you see on the screen here, we have an author image. Uh, we also have um, images of some works. Those were well received. Um, there were some suggestions about this data. For example, um, one user thought it should take up less real estate on the screen. Another one wanted more information, such as academic credentials. And there was one that expressed concern about potential biases from Wikipedia. But in general, they really uh, liked this feature in the interface. We asked them if they wanted to use it again. And even though some of the user friendliness scores were just okay, four out of five users said they wanted to come back and try ShareVD again for future research. And they compared it um, to Google and had said it had a visually pleasing interface. So our next steps are to continue working with the ShareVD user interface user experience group um, to test new features and to um, explore how bib frame relationships can support user needs. I'd like to end with some resources and I'm happy to answer questions at the end. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm Tiziana Bossemato and I'm on behalf of the Share Family Community. Looking back on the path taken so far by the SHARE initiative and its community, I realize how hard we have worked to tell in every presentation made around the world how the various components of the platform were developed and how they work. SHARE-VT, with the sister initiatives that make up the larger SHARE family, was created with the aim of support libraries in this complex period of transition from a protected environment limited to the context of libraries to a broader web space with all its connections, opportunities, and challenges. Now it's time to take a step forward and try to explain why to join this community and what it offers. The shared family improves collection and their visibility, extends the discovery power, and proposes new metadata services. But the most significant added value of the shared initiative is its ability to create a community, sharing resources, knowledge, and skills among the members. The Share Family is a library-driven initiative led by member institutions, and all the components built step by step come from this collaborative work. The main goal of the initiative is to provide a new ecosystem of metadata and services. ShareVD provides a series of services, applications, and technologies, all based on the load platform. It's conceived as a framework in which different components combine to create a rich and complex set of services. The data, processed through enrichment, clustering, and commercial tools, are available in enriched MARC and as a RDF data set. Different deliverables for different scopes to fulfill the different exigencies of each library. <laughs> But the automatic clusterings of millions and millions of data cannot be 100% accurate. In the standard commercial process, we start from flat records to end up with entities representing real world objects. This step is not painless and the final results may not be perfect. 
To improve the quality of data, the editor Jcricket has been designed, which aims to be a transversal tool available to the entire shared community to collaboratively improve the result of automated processes. Linked data is not only for the machines, but also for human consumption. The shared portal supports an entity-based presentation layer with the aim of simplifying the complexity. In such a historical year, in which the concept of cataloging evolves towards that of entity modeling, bibliographic services must also evolve and adapt. The AIMS Working Group has profiled a new generation of authority services. Thus, involved the use of a controlled vocabulary and authority files for working processes to correct bibliographic data, to enrich them, to produce new data in case of lacking information. Data reuse is a, is a key concept in Scher's philosophy. It uses and enriches itself with the data produced by others. But at the same time, it's necessary to ensure that others use the shared family data and services with the same openness. Tools and protocols are being set up for third parties usage and data harvesting. With the same aim, RDF data are available to be used in a triple store through Sparkle Endpoint or through an advanced APIs layer to orchestrate queries to share VDA data from the web discovery portal and from machine to machine application. Think global, act local seems to be the vision and approach pursued by the shared community. The tenant architecture ensures that you work in a large community of experts sharing tools and skills without forgetting the need to localize your project. In a large international community, interoperability is still a key element to be pursued. The encounter between different geographical and cultural communities has prompted the CEI working group to expand the original BibleFrame model to better respond to some specific entity modeling needs. But a linked data project is never a closed project. Any linked data implementation plan cannot ignore partnerships and collaborations. An advantage of the collaboration with the ShareBD is the extensive involvement with the wider library community to support interchange and collaboration. All of the best communities work together to produce BibFrame data, but each following their own transition path, it is very likely that each end result will have its own flavor. Hence, the need to define a sort of a common model, a minimum common and agreed form that guarantees interoperability in between the different systems. I'd like to close by quoting the words Beth Campbell said in a recent conversation. When someone asks, what is ShareVD? The answer that comes to my mind is, ShareVD is many things together. For all of those interested in the shared initiative and its evolution, I suggest you the wiki page that I reported here as a reference. Thank you all.